Hey everybody, it's Alexander Williamson here with The Secret History Living in Your Aquarium. Today we have a really exciting uh, episode. We're going to show you some really cool native fish. Uh, this is all in the future. Uh, I'm a time traveler and so are you. So uh, all day and yesterday we collected fish from several lakes around the area. You're going to see just some gorgeous secret spots within the city limits, within the Seattle city limits, uh, in the urban city center, basically, uh, of where we collected these native fish. And yet, next, you will see them in an aquarium up close. And we're talking over half a dozen species. So I'm going to give you a sneak preview and show you what I'm doing now to set up really quick. Then you'll see catching them, their habitat, and learn a little bit about what's going on there. And finally, we'll do the up close and personal uh, filming of these beautiful fish. So hang tight, and here we go. Hey everybody, welcome to the secret history of living in your aquarium. Today we visited several different marshes, and we've got some interesting fish here. Also, we've got some fish that are sick from the wild. Can we nurse them back to health? Uh, that and we'll be filling this aquarium in about five or six minutes, maybe 10 your time, watching the video and watching me collect. And then we'll have this wild aquarium inspired by uh, Ivan Mikolji. We'll have this set up and uh, populated with five, six, seven different species that we caught today. And all plants that were gathered and substrate and everything, wood that was gathered on site. So uh, stay tuned and let's jump in. Thanks, guys. It's Alexander Williamson here with The Secret History, living in your aquarium. And I wanted to give you guys an update on what a crazy uh, year this has been for nature right here in the Northwest. We've never had a summer with this high of temperatures. And this water here is like seven feet out there deep, at least, maybe ten. Right here it's at least five or six feet deep. And this is Elodia and Pogostemon uh, gayi, or Potomagetan gayi, and a few other different plants that are all in here. And they're crowded in, and the algae is so thick that it's actually made a nut, like a false layer. It looks like it's only a foot deep or so. And the fish are swimming through it, but all these invasive snails are hatching out here. Uh, there's also native snails, but the invasive ones are not good. And it's really sub surreal. Uh, uh, when you see fish swimming through this tangle, there's a few fish in there right now sticklebacks bass uh, perch sunfish uh, and and catfish in here that are obvious There's also trout and salmon that do come through here, but right now the water is too hot for them That um, we also spotted an otter a river otter like an actual real <laughs> river otter uh, Not a sea otter or anything like that, but an actual freshwater river otter here and um, I thought that was pretty cool too so we might catch a sight of him but uh, I wanted to just show you guys these mats that are just surreal of algae and aquatic plants I mean you can see the different biomes and uh, where you've got the elodia as the base in there uh, and then over here where we've got more flow You've got the Potomagetan gayi grass, and you've got the uh, Myriophyllum weeds, as well as uh, there's some uh, hy Hygrophila uh, coriambosa, it looks like, and uh, maybe some parrot's feather and cabamba in there as well. Uh, but then it it, it transfer transfers into there's some Bacopa, and there's Elodia all over as well as nausea grass uh, not the guppy grass but another nausea uh, subgroup of grass that's native to the northwest and it, it what I was just saying to my wife is it looks like Yellowstone it looks like the uh, prismatic springs or something with all these different kinds of plants algae cyanobacteria and uh, and then fish and then substrates, bullfrog eggs right there in the center. Um, it's really cool. Uh, and here's my wife agreeing that it's cool. Oh, cool. 
And uh, as we come over here, we get water that's a little more shaded. And so I'm curious to see what it is looking like. There's kind of a main thoroughfare where the otters and beavers here. And by the way, I am in the heart of Seattle, believe it or not. We are actually right in the city, um, which is quite remarkable. And this water is very, very clear. It's a wetland that's been restored and is actually allowed to do what wetlands do. And uh, it acts like a giant biofilter would on your aquarium. And you get such unique life uh, sprouting here. But where it's shallow and where you're getting uh, the sun and the heat in this water, it is just killing the fish. I mean, the trout and salmon can't take the hot heat because it's not oxygenated even in these deeper trenches where you're seeing the bass and things hanging out today it's it's not oxygenated enough so they're going to be over by the creeks and things uh, maybe underneath some of these plants and you can see can you see the water sparkling that is actually little bugs right at the surface and fish little teeny tiny fish sticklebacks mainly are coming and eating it and then the big fish are hiding the bass and the perch and things like that that can withstand the heat are hiding right on the margins of this muck here we've got a baby wood duck and her ducklings uh, she's pretty she's got the little blue crown on her head the males have a purple and green and red crown on their heads I'd like I hope the males are around somewhere but we've got these little baby ducklings and then Sorry to make you sick with that zoom, but we've also got these little birds hopping around on the floating debris around here. Oh, we just missed it. But um, they're able to then forage and eat fish and bugs and access that whole habitat. Even the turtles think it's too warm. This water is really scuzzy, scummy. Uh, the protein film in here is uh, undoubtedly due to... Uh, the drain off from yards this is definitely fertilizer nitrates nitrites ammonia things like that from the local area and if you just saw a week ago the difference when you've got the right ingredients when you've got that light and you got a carbon source and you've got uh that nitrogen nitrates and the trace elements you get that buildup, and uh that's what's going on here you can see some of the native snails here there's also like trap door snails and a few other kinds um, that are over here there's a colony of them uh, there's there's trap door mud snails from New Zealand that are invasive as well but the native snails generally I mean we have a lot of species but the most common kind and easiest to identify are these ones right here um, and they're just a northwestern freshwater snail that um, you find in a lot of the alpine lakes and stuff too naturally. But just a beautiful day out here. So I wanted to share this with you guys and show you this. Even though it's not a healthy system per se, it is working the way nature is supposed to. The algae's on top. The debris settles to the bottom. You know, the fish get out of the way. The wind is doing evaporative cooling. Uh, certain animals in algae are flourishing really well in this, but it's just, it's kind of surreal to see uh, such a bloom. It's never been this hot in the shallow waters here. You know, we're seeing 80 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit, 28 or so Celsius in, uh, in the fresh water here. And that's tropical temperature, You're literally cooking the fish and suffocating them which is a bummer, but we will continue and see what we can see. So here we have the stickleback swimming in this, and actually we just had one hop right over there. I don't usually see sticklebacks jumping, so it's probably that there's a, a bigger fish underneath that cover over there startling them, but we've got all the young sticklebacks right up against the pilings of this little dock area uh, or walkway, and then the water goes down really deep here, actually, seven or eight feet right here in this pocket, this hole. And then the Elodia uh, grows up really tall, really fast, as well as 
parrot feather and then you can see the bank of the bogginess and the algae forms on it as soon as it can uh, but if it weren't for all this deep natural elodia uh, grass we would not have oxygen in the water at all anymore we don't have a cool spot to hang out at all for those fish that need the cooler water even the sticklebacks are having a really hard time with this hot of water they need to hang out in the currents like these ones here of the deep channels you can see there's a channel that cuts through uh through this shallow area here and uh they need that the bigger fish though are going to be under them and feeding and that is why they have that armor on their belly and why they have the spikes on top is to worry about the birds from above that are perched out not to mention today there have also been river otters out here at least one so and bullfrogs over here so their life is very fraught <laughs> all right so we've got Stickle back up here with multiple patterns, chessboard, zebra. I don't see any circular patterns. So they're all kind of reedy. They're probably all from the same group, those ones. And then we've got an adult here, which at first I thought was a female with the red and bronze, but now I'm not so sure. It could be a big, big male, but looks more like a female to me. Beautiful eye. And we've got a coastal a sculp in here you can see the spikes on it and then while we're talking about it here comes the bullheads little catfish and then we should have a few more little sculpins in there and then there's one rock bass or some sort of little pan fish i don't know where it went but this this uh this guy right here these are different than the other uh, sculpin, they have, or it might be male versus female. Oh, there's yours. There's the little panfish up there. So this is probably a rock bass, but we don't know for certain yet. But nice, nice catches, Lawrence. And all right, guys. So this is the path. I know I said it's right in the middle of the city, but uh. It's also not the easiest thing to get to. Also, I just dropped my phone in here and just blindly felt around for it. You can see the water seeping in. That's okay. It'll dry out. It's a water-resistant phone. Or at least, I hope that's true. hope the audio is coming in. But, got baby bass in here, some sunfish, and a pumpkin seed fish. So, I'm really hoping to get them home. Or, not home, but uh, to the out out boy well it was trippy effects out to the car where i can clean them up and take a picture uh i'm actually not going to take them home uh i don't have the proper place for them nor do i want to feed them but pretty cool these trees that have fallen and boy real surreal uh swirls it's like uh when frodo wears the ring man whoa all right guys <laughs> enough of that uh Let's show you what I found. So I wanna show you guys also some of the life that is just everywhere when you scoop anything out of this water. Really any of the lakes, streams around here this time of year, you will get beetles, bugs, uh, caddisfly larvae, um, you know, uh, oarsmen beetles, water striders, you name it. Um, and if you look carefully on these irises here, let's take a look. You can see the big old dragonfly and other nymphs living off of, see them on the blades of grass there? They're big, three inches probably, all the way down to teeny tiny, but they get, they get real big uh, and they look pretty nasty. They can have some pretty good jaws on them and uh, also will mess up your fish <laughs> in a hurry in some cases. So beware, beware of the large dragonfly brood. And uh, I'll show you if I happen to get anything kind of interesting. Sometimes there's these white oarsmen beetles with different color eyes that are kind of cool. All right guys, we are back and we are here 
with the fish that I collected earlier and we've got quite the collection uh, of fish we've got a lot of sticklebacks in here and they vary a lot we've got the Sun finally on the tank it looks really beautiful um, really get the color of the fish they're still stressed so they're not gonna be their full color and they're in municipal water and so they're not going to have their full uh, beauty as when they have tannins and um, anthocyanins and all the different chemicals that are in the water that normally give them their radiant colors and things they just don't have and you know what's interesting is when you catch wild fish it's very frequent that they have issues like this one has some sort of uh, fluke injury on its gill plate this is a largemouth bass and when we first caught it in the net it was very clear that its tail was yellow hard to see in this light but it was so then this is a male stickleback right here uh, and you can see the the beautiful yellow and it's got uh, circular patterns on it which means that that is one we caught in the in the plants that had um, little leaves like these ones here um, small leaves whereas if it was in a grassy area or in like this Potomagetan Gaei or the Nangensis grass or uh, Naja grass then you get the bars and they get tiger stripes like these ones up here like this guy and the more out in the open they are the more armor plating they have uh, to protect themselves. So this is over here, this is a full grown female stickleback and this is of the blue collection point that we gathered them from and she is quite the pretty fish. Um, we've had her now, actually I have had her for a few weeks. She's, she's looking really pretty with that yellow eye um, we caught another one with a bright green eye that you might have seen in, in the still frame shots. But again, here's that, that little bass again, um, the largemouth bass. You can tell they're a largemouth bass not only by the body having uh, the long uh, stripe down the side, but also by the mouth will come back behind the actual eyes. So that's a good tell. But here we've got the, again, uh, the stickleback female hanging out coloring up in that blue with the tiger stripes and the keyhole dots now there's something a little off on the slime mold and or slime coat I should say rather the slime <laughs> not slime mold but the slime coat on this fish uh, you can tell is a little bit irritated and that's probably just because of the change in water and not having enough tannins. So we'll want to return these fish to their natural habitat quickly. And also you don't want to put them with any, um, any fish that aren't native because they could have all sorts of diseases and things. Now looking up in the water, we've got little baby rock bass. And they look just like a freshwater Oscar. I mean, they're awesome looking fish. And we'll document this just because it's kind of playing dead at the moment, but it's not. It, it, it's just fine. Um, but this is the, a bullhead catfish and doing its thing and uh, just doing its thing. Now, uh-oh, looks like we've got another fish playing dead, which is the bluegill. And if we move the bluegill... It was doing this earlier. The bluegill was sick when we pulled it out of the water. Look at this. We've got there. There you can see just in the last few hours, it's getting worse. So we want to get it back to its natural habitat. It's got some sort of fungi or um, slime coat buildup problem. You can see it's also got ulcers forming. And so what I wanted to show you about this is that these fish, the na natural fish, just because they're from the wild, doesn't mean they're healthy. I mean fish get all sorts of diseases especially right now they've got really hot water that they're dealing with and it's causing all sorts of problems for them unfortunately and this fish i don't even know if it'll make it so as far as the 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 fish go in here we'll definitely want to catch this this fish and get him out of here 
her out of here because who knows also the hole in the head thing could spread and we don't want to spread that to even fish in the same lake but um let, we'll catch this fish and we'll try to get that out of here because look it's it's also got red in the gills and so let's get it into an oxygenated tank of some sort even though it's beautiful color and everything and that's nice to document the greens and the the beauty of this fish it, it's uh it's time to put it back um after we'll probably treat it in one of these little side compartments over here and uh treat it with antibiotics and then we'll uh in the morning try to take it back after it's been treated so we'll go ahead and do that i'm going to cut for just a moment and then we'll talk for the last little bit about the last couple kinds of fish in here and the plants. So back looking at the plants and fish, we've also got a smallmouth bass and then we've got another little uh, fish in here that we've got a nice looking little uh, white uh, sucker mouth fish that's native. Uh, sometimes they're called white fish, but that's also a very different and well-known fish uh, in Montana and out in the Rockies. So whitefish is a little too confusing, but the suckerfish or the white-headed suckerfish is another way to describe it. Um, and also that catfish is back up in the water hanging out, eating on uh, some of the mulm that came out of uh, the pond. So in the tank here, from above, you can see that the rock bass are hanging out up in the upper waters and they're hiding right underneath. The normal bass and the rock bass are both together hanging out underneath everything uh, in that shallow water, just like they do out in the lake. The sticklebacks play with the depth of the water and, and move all over the place. And as far as algae goes it was all over the lake so you can see that it's very similar to algae we see in tropical fish uh, aquariums but um, it's on the wood so it's it's there and it's leaching tannins and um, you know the fish it helps their slime coat you can see here that the slime coats got issues on this stickleback and it's probably because right now this observation tank, like I said, is not acidic enough and it doesn't have enough tannins. So we'll be getting it back as well as those bass. And uh, look at this little stickleback is very happy. So these ones were probably from the open water and they've got the armor that's metallic reflective uh, and the stickles that are nice and protective for them. But let's try to find one little rock bass for you guys, uh, and then we can wrap this up. But here we've got anacris and elodia as plants. We've got a so swasertong, a uh, natural water pelia plant in here. We've also got the nongensis uh, or nausea grass as some people call it. It's, it's more of like a guppy grass is what it's known as but just a really uh, versatile grass, great hatching ground for the babies, and uh, definitely similar to what we have in the hobby, as well as we've got a myriophyllum that is similar to what we've got in the hobby, uh, a few of those, and we've also got the Potomagetan gayi, which is another plant similar to many of those uh, in the hobby. In fact, that one is in our hobby. And here we've got Ludwigia uh, palustris, and uh, there's also uh, Ludwigia exlocustris and Ludwigia, um, uh, one more that I can't recall the name of exactly right now. But there's a lot of different plants in here, and let's, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to find the little rock bass. So here's one of the little rock bass. And uh, they're just beautiful bronze and copper, and they've got a digital, like, pixelated pattern, if you can see that on them. They're just a really cool little fish, but they hide. So you get them with the dip net, uh, and they're definitely much more sneaky with their, with their blending in. Over here we've got one that I said, they look just like freshwater Oscars, and I love that about them. They're really cool gonna try to not stress them out a ton but also we've got sculpin in here 
Uh, we've got both ornate sculpin and coastal sculpin, sculpin. Uh, and they're they're a little different, but um, they look pretty similar. So let's see if we can find one of the sculpins in here um, as kind of a good night for the show, as well as more sticklebacks. There's a lot of sticklebacks in here, over a dozen right now in a five and a half gallon. So this isn't a good long-term setup, obviously. We're gonna return everyone except for the sick fish, which, yeah, they're sick, um, but I'd rather try to treat them, even though they are wild. I, I wanna see if we can make them well. So here we've got a sculpin coming to say hello. And sun is starting to set on the British Empire. No, on, uh, on our fish tank here, on our little wild fish tank. And again, in the shade, you can see the rock bass, you can see the catfish, which is the bullheaded, it's a black bullhead, you can tell by the whiskers. Uh, there's also green, yellow, there's various different ones in the water here. But I wanted to get a parting shot of just, yeah, there we go. The beautiful pixelated look of these young rock bass, they're, they're just like a little Oscar and they look like they have Navajo or some sort of crazy braided pattern on them and I just, I really love that fish. Um, so, other than that, there's some more sculpin in here that we're not going to bother um, to find. We're going to just release everybody soon. And uh, thanks for your time, guys. I hope you enjoyed seeing what is in the ponds and lakes and creeks around Seattle. This is just scratching the surface, and this is just the native fish of the area. There's still at least uh, about 40 other species that are in the waters here that you can find. These are just some of the small and uh, frequently found ones. So thanks for tuning in. Hit that like button if you did like it. If you didn't, let me know why. And uh, if you've got any opinion also on uh, you know the fact that fish come in sick. And also, by the way, we've got eggs here too. Um, so should I let them hatch? Should I uh, keep some of this stuff? and see what happens, or should it all go back just uh, right away? You know, no ifs, ands, or buts. Let nature do its thing. Thanks again to Ivan Mikolji for encouraging me to do this uh, aquascape, or, or just really terrarium, vivarium, or aquarium, near your site or on site with all materials from your site. Um, really fun and interesting and it gives you guys a good view of what was under all that algae and muck in the videos so thanks for tuning in i'll talk to you guys later uh next time on the secret history living in your aquarium goodbye